fellow KISS fans! Welcome, welcome to It's All For You Demon, celebrating the fun of being a KISS fan today. Kind of another um, throwaway vlog. Usually I try to keep it contained to KISS content, topics, discussion, wax. Welcome to the Wax Night Basement. Today, putting my thoughts together for the Hot in the Shade panel has spoken over on In My Head. My friend Brant runs a fantastic channel over there and has a fantastic opportunity for everyone to become involved. The panel has spoken. Awesome idea, awesome opportunity for everyone to become involved. And I was putting together my thoughts for Hot in the Shade and Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits and started thinking Smashes and Hot in the Shade were the two albums that really introduced me to Kiss. They put me on the first step of the journey into becoming a Kiss fan, collecting Kiss. My life encompassing this band. When I was 14 years old, I began to put Kiss merchandise on my walls. I just turned 46 and I still, my walls are full of KISS merchandise. That's a huge commitment. We've all done it. We're all part of it. It's universal magic and it's wonderful and it's a great way to live life. It's very, very fun. But what put me on this path? That's what I want to talk about tonight. The pop culture that made it all for you demon. First up, not really pop culture, but I love animals. I love dogs. I love cats. I love all animals. And my love of dogs started when I was very young. This is a picture of my very first dog ever. 1980, Daisy Duke was her name. And this started my absolute love of dogs. Here is a picture of Daisy Duke and myself. In high school I would have been a sophomore here. Well into my becoming a KISS fan and there I am with the coolest haircut in the world and my best friend. My first dog, Daisy. This is kinda cool. Here's the back of Daisy's head. She had a white belly and it wrapped around her neck and her markings went up on the back of her head and made like this arrow. So whenever she walked, it was like this arrow pointing wherever she would turn. It's kind of neat. And this is my second dog, Lady. I found her at a college party. Some jackass was making her drink beer out of a bowl and I walked straight up to the dog, grabbed it, left, and never went back to the party. But I had a dog. And her name was Lady. She was awesome. Lady was super cool. She would give you high fives if you wanted one. You just have to say give me five. And she would give you the little high five. And here is myself and Lady. Early 2000s, back when I had my ears pierced and dyed my hair black. Not the wisest fashion choice, but I wanted to be a glam rocker. So there you go. These were our two cats. That is Mrs. Buttersworth. And that is Flapjacks, the white one. And Flapjacks would actually attack Lady. It was pretty awesome. Flapjacks was extremely mean. I one time witnessed Flapjacks run my friend Todd out of our basement. He like full on charged Todd and Todd went running for his life. It was the most awesome thing ever. Not that he scared my friend Todd, but he was just that much of a badass cat. It was his basement, and if you went down there, he didn't like it. He only liked me, and uh, apparently he didn't like Lady too much. But uh, he was a uh, he was an angry white cat. Here's Flapjacks as a kitten, and me again with that amazingly horrible dyed black hair. And this was our first Great Dane, Nikki Six, next to Lady there on the bed on the kiss blanket. And Nikki had the coolest design on her face. It was black and gray. 
straight down the middle. Kind of made like this two-faced thing. Very cool. First things first, pop culture as a child of the 70s was this. And it was this for a lot of us. It was this for me as well. I saw this movie at the drive-in when I was a child with my sister and my mom and dad. I saw Star Wars and my love of collecting was born. And things really, really changed for me when this movie came out. Still my all-time favorite movie. And, again, spawned my need to collect everything Star Wars. And I don't have a lot on hand throughout the years, but I do still have the Star Wars R2-D2 radio controlled toy. Not as cool as a KISS radio van, but this was mine from when I was little, from back then. This movie absolutely changed my life, and I wouldn't be the collector I am today if it wasn't for this. And there is me and my sister, Halloween 1978, me dressed as Darth Vader. There is me, Christmas, I think probably 79 or 80, getting a Star Wars t-shirt. For Christmas. See, if I was a KISS fan, I would have these amazingly cool memories, but I wasn't a KISS boy. I was a Star Wars boy. And I think my last run of Halloween Star Wars fun, second or third grade here, dressed as a stormtrooper, those lovely curtains once again. Next up is this 45, Rick Springfield's I've Done Everything For You, covering the Sammy Hagar song, First grade, this 45 changed everything for me. Could have been the dog, could have been the hooks in the song. But when I heard this song and stared at this 45 sleeve on the living room floor of my parents' house in front of the record player, I wanted rock and roll power more than anything in the world. I wanted to tap into that rock and roll stardom. I didn't know really what it was, how it could be obtained, I knew I needed it. And this 45 sleeve changed my life. First grade. See, Pee Wee agrees. She knows the power of rock and roll. Next up, third grade, enter MTV. And these guys came on the radar. I have no idea how I convinced my mom to let me have this tape or buy this shirt. This was my very first like rock t-shirt. It wasn't a concert shirt. It was just this album cover on a black t-shirt. Bought it at a store called Gift Horse for like six dollars. And I don't know what possessed my mom to allow me to have this because this is way more dangerous looking Maybe it was the popularity on MTV. I don't know what it was, but Quiet Riot tapped in to that Rick Springfield rock and roll thirst and made it dangerous, and I liked it. But I loved this album way more. I remember when my mom drove me to the mall to get this on cassette on our way home a bumblebee flew in our car and we had to pull over and I was angry because it was delaying me from getting home and listening to Condition Critical. I am far more a Condition Critical boy than I am Metal Health. Condition Critical is one of those records I could put on today, right now, and still know every word. But these guys would have been the birth of me wanting to fall in love with rock and roll bands. Still chugging through elementary school, Rick Springfield made it look super cool to wear a guitar and sing songs, but suddenly there was a new guy on the block who made playing guitar magical. And who amongst us did not fall head over heels for this band? Fifth grade Christmas got this on cassette. I love Duran Duran, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Any kid that grew up in the 80s loved this band. Simon Le Bon, one of the greatest vocalists of all time. Got this on cassette 
fifth grade Christmas along with this. I suddenly no longer just wanted to play guitar. I wanted to be a rock star. Around around sixth grade, I met this guy. Well, I've, no, I've known this guy all my life, but he was the bully of the neighborhood when I was young. His name's Danny. Talk about him in all of my vlogs. Sixth grade, met this guy, and we started a bond of like skateboards and BMX bikes and having fun and dreaming big dreams and listening to Motley Crue and Van Halen and White Snake and Boston and Metallica and Run DMC and a huge friendship that last to this day was born and it was all based on escapism it was all based on rock and roll it was all based on having fun never taking anything serious and always escaping the world you know doing your own thing finding your own hobby and escaping and probably about a year before this photo was taken of me with my very first electric guitar and I know it was about a year prior because I have an awesome curled, permed mullet going on. And that was sophomore year. Sophomore, dude. Sophomore. That was sophomore year. About a year prior to this picture, Danny showed up at my house with these two items. And everything changed. I fell in love with this band. And like a religion... It took over my life. I, just like you, started covering my walls in images of this band. Arranging every collectible shelf you possibly can with merch from this band. It's like an obsession. It's childish. I get it. But it means everything to me, to you, to us. This logo is everything it's so weird it's sometimes i can't wrap my head around it like it's so big it's so universal we think about it every day we talk about it every day we listen to it every day it's what makes life good especially like now with all this stuff going on like this this stuff keeps us sane and maybe that is what this entire vlog is about. That fun of being a KISS fan is what keeps us sane. It's what keeps us going through this amazingly weird time. This time when you're not allowed to leave the house. You can no longer go look for records at the record store. We've never seen times like this, but because of this band, we can get through it because we can go down in our wax night basement and become the 15 year old kid again who bought smashes, thrashes and hits and learned about this amazing catalog of this band who bought hot in the shade. And although it's not an album full of integrity, it is so much fun and it is so ingrained in my DNA. You know, sitting down tonight to complete my list for the panel, I realized how big these albums are to me. These albums are everything to me. They started it all. But at the same time, it would not have been completed if it wasn't for Star Wars, if it wasn't for Rick Springfield, if it wasn't for Motley Crue, if it wasn't for Dan... None of it would have been completed, and I certainly wouldn't be the 46-year-old nerd I am without all of this. And times like these, you just kind of have to think about this stuff and be grateful. Count your blessings, because life is good, 
and even better with good friends and rock and roll. So there you have a uh, strangely deep ending to a vlog. I didn't mean to get that deep. This didn't start out that deep and it kind of went deep. So I apologize for that. If deepness is not your thing, but it, I'm sincere when I say that. Life is good, count your blessings, and I mean this with all my heart. The greatest thing we can get from this fandom is the friends we make. The connections, fellow fans, celebrating this band with all these people is what it's all about. It's all about fun. And my name is Rick. This is It's All For You Demon, and what we do here is celebrate the fun of being a KISS fan. Thank you for hanging with me. Take care. Be safe. Be good to your animals. We've seen a lot tonight. Spay, neuter, microchip? Large March says, I'm better than all of those dogs. Pee Wee agrees. You guys are the best, aren't you? The best in the world. And I will talk to you soon. <laughs>